Welcome everyone. Uh, this is a Java uh, Ask the Java Experts uh, at Microsoft uh, session. So uh, basically, this is a session for uh, for you to ask any questions of all of the work that we do across the portfolio uh, that is related to Java in one way or the other, whether it's Azure or not. Uh, obviously, most of you probably know we have now have a Open JDK build, uh, so this is a good a good place to um, ask questions about that as well. Uh, we have a, a very good panel of experts here, and we'll be running for about half hour or so. The session is recorded. If you uh, we, we will put, put out the recording later so you could share it with your friends and uh, co-workers and uh, you know see see what exciting things we're working on. So I'll introduce our panelists here today. So I have Asir. Uh, he's principal program manager on the Java on Azure team, uh, basically the Java on Azure guru. He takes care of everything and anything that has to do with Java on Azure. Uh, we have Bruno Borges. He's a principal program manager on the platform, Java platform team, basically. At this moment, at least, it is mostly centered around the, the Open JDK build that we have. Uh, so we'll, we'll, you can ask him all kinds of uh, questions, on, uh, you know, about that. Uh, I have Edward Bruns, who uh, who is the principal architect. Uh, he is uh, my engineering counterpart. I'll introduce myself last, uh, but you can ask him any questions on Java EE on Azure, essentially. Uh, we also have Martin Verberg. Uh, he is uh, the manager of the of the platform group. Uh, again, you can ask him all kinds of questions on OpenJDK. Uh, and we have Teresa Nguyen. She's a senior program manager on our compute team, uh, mostly specializing in JBoss EAP workloads uh, and uh, somebody that works with Red Hat very closely. So any kind of JBoss EAP or Red Hat related question, you can certainly ask her. Uh, and lastly, uh, myself, I'm Reza Rahman. I'm a principal program manager for Java on Azure. Uh, more or less, I, I have the same role as Asir does, uh, but I guess a bit more focused on uh, Java E on Azure. Uh, but today, actually, I won't be uh, answering any questions. I'll be asking the questions uh, because I'm the host. Uh, so we do have a set of curated questions uh, that I'll ask here in a moment. I don't see a whole lot of questions that, that has come in, uh, but do feel free to put in your questions. I will take a look at your questions and sort of weigh to see uh, you know, if, if they make more sense or whether the questions that we've already curated make sense. We have quite a few very good curated questions actually. So uh, these are the sort of topics uh, as you can, as you probably have guessed from the speaker list that we'll be covering. So these are uh, the Microsoft Open JDK build, um, VS Code for Java. Hopefully most of you know that uh, VS Code actually supports Java these days. Uh, any questions on, jo on Java on Azure? It's a very, very broad portfolio. It includes things like uh, Azure DevOps and uh, Azure Functions that also has support for Java. Uh, anything Spring on Azure? We, we work very hard to ensure that the Spring framework and things like Spring Boot are run extremely well on Azure, so you can ask questions on that. Uh, and finally, you can ask uh, questions on Java E on Azure, and these are your traditional application servers like uh, JBoss EAP, Wildfly, uh, WebSphere, and WebLogic, um, and all those, how they are supported on Azure. So I think without further ado, let's get started with the questions. Let me just take a brief look at uh, how we're looking like with the, with the list of Q&A questions. Uh, if there aren't too many, I think we're going to get started uh, with uh, with the curated set of questions and questions, and in fact, there aren't a whole lot, but there is one question uh, uh, that I think uh, is fairly interesting, uh, and that just came in. So I'll I'll ask this. I think this is a question around Open JDK. So I think this will be a good question for Bruno to answer. So the question is: Would you consider making an Alpine or distroless Docker image? Uh, implicitly, probably we're talking about Open JDK. So, what do you think, Bruno? Um, hi, yeah, that's a great question. And uh, so far, we have uh, got not enough feedback on the need for Alpine. And what we can say is that um, it, it is an interesting ask. It is an interesting question and um, um, use case for having very small Docker images, but um, officially, Alpine support in the OpenJDK project is only available for OpenJDK 16 and later versions. And uh, we we want to make sure that um, OpenJDK on Alpine is uh, fully supported and part of the OpenJDK project as well. So that's why we don't see Alpine support for OpenJDK 11 on the Microsoft build of OpenJDK, uh, but it's something that we are considering for OpenJDK 16 uh, in coming soon. So 
uh, do expect to see Alpine uh, for 16 at least. And for JDK 11, we're going to evaluate uh, what is needed to uh, backport that sort of support or see how other uh, vendors are doing that uh, in a way that is um, um, uh, reflects the Alpine support in the OpenJDK main project. OK, so next question is also an open GDK question. I think uh, just to mix it up, I'll, I'll uh, I think this it'll be good. Uh, Martin, if you could answer this. Why should I use the Microsoft build of open GDK versus Oracle open GDK? That is a fantastic question. So uh, first of all, to reassure anyone who is looking at using the Microsoft build of open JDK, it, it is a drop in replacement for Oracle JDK or any other open JDK uh, out there today. Uh, we all meet the Java specification by passing the TCK. Um, the reason why you would want to use Microsoft's build of open JDK is in particular if you're an Azure user. And this is really to do with uh, the support policy that we have around the Microsoft build. Uh, if you're an Azure uh, or Azure stack customer with a qualifying support plan, uh, you can pick up the phone and give us a call whenever you have an issue with any of your uh, JVM issues uh, from our build. Uh, going forwards, uh, you will also likely see um, that we will be enhancing the Microsoft build uh, for Azure workloads and we'll be upstreaming most of that to OpenJDK where we're unable to. Uh, you'll see us clearly signposting that in release notes. All right, next question I think is for Osir. Why should you use, uh, why should you use uh, VS Code as opposed to IntelliJ as a Java developer? Oh, VS Code. VS Code is free. It's open source, it's lightweight, and it understands Java, right? Uh, VS Code also has extensions for all your popular tools like frameworks and app servers like Tomcat, Maven, Git, Gradle, Spring Boot, um, all, the, all the favorite ones, right? And it, it has extensions for Azure services. You can deploy to Azure services. It also has enough functionalities for developers who are working with Azure services particularly when you're working with like SQL database or Cosmos DB, if you want to look up some data, you know, it's it has all kinds of friendly tools. Now, if you are a developer, developer like me and working with Java, JavaScript, CLI, SQL, VS Code is a great tool for you. It has everything you need for building those apps in the cloud. All right, next question. I think, uh, Bruno, it'll be good if you can answer this. Uh, will the Microsoft OpenGDK build support Java SC8? Currently, no, we do not currently provide a build of OpenJDK for Java 8. Okay. All right. Uh, I think next one, I think, Asur, is also for you. Why should Java developers consider Azure? Um, so, Azure has more choices. Did you know that Azure has managed services for Spring, Tomcat, and Java E through JBoss? Azure Spring Cloud is jointly operated and supported by Microsoft and VMware. If you take JBoss EAP in App Service, it's jointly developed and operated, supported by Microsoft and Red Hat. Azure also has official offers from IBM for WebSphere, Oracle for WebLogic, Red Hat for JBoss. These are all jointly built and supported by Microsoft and these companies. If you're using Cache, Redis uh, is available in collaboration with Redis Labs. Managed Elastic Service is available. Confluent is available. So you're, you're all well supported by our excellent partners and their products on Azure. Azure is global. It's available in many, many regions if you compare it to any other cloud provider. Now, as a developer, you can build your tools, build your apps using the tools and frameworks that you love. Any choice. You can automate from idea to production using the choice of automation tools and platforms. Whether you are on GitHub, whether you're using Azure Pipelines, Jenkins, GitLab, you name it, right? And you can monitor your apps end to end using your choice of tools. Whether you're using Log Analytics, Elastic, Splunk, New Relic, App Dynamics, it's your choice. So you have all these choices. So that's one reason why Java developers should consider Azure. All right, Martin, so this is an interesting question. I, I think I'd like you to answer it. Uh, are there any specific enhancements planned for my, for the Microsoft version of OpenJDK that won't be upstreamed? Yes, yeah, so there's a whole classification where this can occur. Um, so our policy is to upstream everything first. 
Uh, but because at OpenJDK, uh, the Java 11 project in particular is extremely risk averse. It's been a long term service release for a long time. It's a very stable code base and even something as uh, simple as a small performance fix that we uh, applied for MD5, uh, which impacted some of our Azure SDK customers. Um, despite it being accepted at TIP, so for Java 16, it was not accepted in Java 11 because of the risk adverse nature. So you'll see us putting in a whole bunch of small enhancements like that in the coming years, uh, which we will attempt to upstream. Uh, but if we're told no, again, we'll have to clearly signpost those to our customers. Okay, so uh, I think Martin to some extent has answered this question already, but I see this question has vote. So I think Bruno, I don't mind uh, getting your take on this one. How does Microsoft offer commercial support for the MS uh, OpenJDK build? Well, the what, what we want to make sure is that Azure customers and Azure Stack customers, if and when they see any sort of problem with OpenJDK, it may be even an existing bug that uh, OpenJDK project does have. Um, and them as customers, they can provide feedback to us and say, hey, this is impacting my Java workload on Azure. Can you please go and fix it? That's sort of the customer support that we can provide to those customers, and that would help us prioritize our backlog and put those requests uh, into our backlog and fix those issues uh, sooner rather than later and uh, provide those patches uh, upstream to the OpenJDK project, as Martin suggests, uh, uh, mentioned, and uh, make sure that those patches are available in our build, um, if possible, even sooner than uh, other distributions might have. Uh, I think this is a good question for you, uh, Asir. How does Azure support VMware Tanzu? So there are two offers for you, right? So if you like to run VMware Tanzu directly on Azure, we have the you can run it on Azure IaaS as a platform where you will be controlling from top to all the way down to the down to the infrastructure. The other option we have is um, you have your Spring Boot apps running on Tanzu. Uh, we have an excellent managed platform in collaboration with VMware. It's fully built, operated, and supported by Microsoft and VMware. It's called Azure Spring Cloud, where you can simply deploy your apps and do not have to worry about any infrastructure uh, monitoring or app lifecycle. Everything is taken care of for you so that you can just deploy and focus on your business. Okay. Let me jump in on that one and give another perspective on the everything is done for you versus I would like to do some things myself. So the kind of solutions we're doing with Java EE is more currently enabled for kind of pass as a service. So you're not gonna get a pass, you're gonna deploy something and then you could have your own pass. For example, uh, deploying a web logic cluster that you will manage and you could do that on VMs, you could do that on Azure Kubernetes service, uh, but instead of having Microsoft run all of the stuff as it does in Azure Spring Cloud, you'll have more of the responsibility yourself. But on the other hand, uh, the cost is also different. So we want to have a menu of options for Java on Azure that fit everyone's possible needs. So if you want a full expensive, more expensive possibly service that is fully white glove, full pass, then Spring is good for you. If you're willing to do more work yourself, maybe run it on Kubernetes, you're familiar with that, then you could deploy uh, your Java AE stuff. If you want even an easier experience, you could look at app service with JBoss. Uh, JBoss CAP is one of the things that we offer. So that's a good segue for our next question, uh, Ed. I, I think you should take this one. How does WebLogic licensing work on AKS? Well, what we've got worked out with Oracle, and this is a part of the um, larger Oracle Microsoft partnership that has been in effect since June of 2019, uh, it's a bring your own license offer. So the licenses are portable to uh, bringing to um, Azure. Uh, and the nice benefit there, again, if you do AKS, you're paying for the cost of AKS, which is really um, quite nominal uh, to run a plain old AKS, depending on what node sizes you use and what other kinds of uh, network capacities and such if you need a lot of uh, express route to get to your local um, data center or you're running your database inside of VMs, uh, that would be another set of costs. However, um, the open connect with Azure data centers and Oracle data centers allows you to run your middleware on Azure and continue to run your uh, databases in the OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. 
So um, this gives our the sales teams from both Oracle and Microsoft the ability to find the optimal arrangement of pricing for each customer. So Asar, we had a new question just came in. I think it's a very good one. Uh, I don't mind if you take a stab at answering this one. Do you have any pro tips to reduce the Azure function warm up time for Spring Boot apps? Um, warm up time for Spring Boot apps, right? So many times what we saw as customers were developers were trying to initialize lots of uh, connections to databases, right? Uh, so that's definitely a place where you can sharpen it so that your your speed of um, initial bootstrap is reduced, right? So that you can quickly, quickly uh, start up, right? Um, then if you look at the Spring community by itself, right? They have put out plenty of tips for optimizing your Spring apps itself, Spring Boot apps itself, right? Um, like lazy loading. Uh, there are many JVM options. Uh, Dave Sire has put out a nice article and he's done lots of experiments, right? So all of those apply when you're running in the cloud, where when it when it starts, it can start up very, very, very quickly, right? So those are all uh, many of those steps. Uh, and the other piece that I want to call out is in Azure Functions, we have many built-in triggers and bindings. If you can leverage them, then what will happen is your Spring Boot app will be very, very thin. That way, when Azure Function is start spawning many instances of your Spring Boot apps, it will start very quickly and the system as a whole, the platform Azure Function, it can take care of binding triggers instead of you trying to connect to Service Bus or you trying to connect to a database or you trying to connect to a Kafka, right? That's where when you take advantage of the, that point, it's the function, Azure functions can come into play and speed and things up for you. It's kind of analogous to what you see technologies like Graal doing. What you've just described us here is basically hand done ahead of time compilation, where if you know the services that you're going to need, you mm -hmm. can declare, okay, I'm gonna get these ready, have them warm and ready for me. So, um, but you're able to tune it more uh, specific to your individual environment. Right. So we talked about JBoss EAP on App Service before. We do have a question here. Uh, and the question, I think this is a good question for Teresa. When will the JBoss EAP on App Service offer Go GA? Uh, we are looking at, at next month. Uh, just waiting to finalize some details, but it's ready out the door. You can actually use it right now. It's in a public preview. Uh, and you won't have products support uh, production support at the moment, but as soon as it goes GA, you can switch over. Um, and with that, you also have options in there for uh, two different SKUs. So just keep an eye out for that. So we'll make an announcement uh, sometime in June. Okay, so another question that's a variant of the question, uh, I think Martin Bruno, you've asked, uh, you've answered before, but I think obviously we, we should clarify this a bit more. So. Martin, uh, I don't mind if you answer this. Can I get support for Java desktop applications running on Windows with the Microsoft OpenJDK build? Uh, this is a, a great question, and and it really, you know, we have to be clear here what what support mean what support means. If you are using the Microsoft build of OpenJDK and you want to run it on your Windows desktop, uh, you can and you will get free updates uh, every quarter. Uh, they call them the patch set updates, uh, and we will supply that to you for free and we will you know, make sure the installers work and all that good stuff. However, at this stage, um, we are not providing what we would call commercial support. Uh, so pick up the phone to Microsoft uh, to raise an issue with, with uh, Java on your Windows desktop. Um, but we're very interested to hear from customers and hear about experiences. Um, so yeah, please, please do come speak to us with your requirements. So I think Bruno, you're going to like this one. Uh, can we get JavaFX support? <laughs> well, we have Jonathan uh, Giles we hired. Yeah, what, what we can say is that OpenJDK, Microsoft's beautiful OpenJDK passes the TCK. And for that reason, it, it is a true Java SE platform. And JavaFX is a Java desktop framework that runs on top of the Java SE platform. So not only JavaFX, but any other framework for Java, whether it's server side or desktop application, uh, will run on top of the Microsoft build of OpenJDK. So our, our JDK does support 
uh, those sort of deployments and they'll support JavaFX for that extension. Hey, Bruno, does that mean Java Web Start works? Java Web Start is not available on Java 11 specification and oh, therefore it out GDK fine. 11 does not support it. Yeah. So Asher, right. I think this is a good question for you. How do you learn and stay up to date with Java on Azure? Uh, that's a good question. So we are continuously innovating across the spectrum by providing you with newer services, newer features, offers, SDKs, Spring on Azure integration, supporting app servers, newer app servers, right? JBoss tools, you know, support for popular APMs, newer. All of these things are coming again, right? Newer things. So most of these announcements, they come through a Java at Microsoft blog. Also, some come through Azure blog. And we push out through Java at Microsoft Twitter handle. We have Java and Azure YouTube channel. Uh, we also have official docs where you can also see many of these details come out. We periodically run webinars as well. Uh, and we also reach out to existing customers through Azure Mail, right? So stay tuned. These are all many of the, the entry points where you can stay tuned. And over the years, we are going to figure out how to effectively communicate to you. It's going to be an innovation on our side. Well, um, one other I, great I thing. Like to, oh, sorry. I'd like to add to that. Uh, on because I work closely with uh, Red Hat and enabling JBoss to run on Azure, we mm -hmm. have uh, the Azure market, uh, sorry, the marketplace for JBoss EAP right now. Uh, that's live and available, and also for the app service. Uh, going back to the question earlier, and it also runs an arrow, and we work. We also have um, the new Java landing page for Java for that's Azure developers. We should talk mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bruno, you want to talk a bit about that? Java on Azure landing page, right? That's a great one-stop shop for all of what people want to do for um, yeah. Java. Yeah, I think I oh. uh, actually hit my mute on my side. Sorry. I was going to finish up as I've been working closely with Red Hat to bring the education aspect of things to uh, customers. So we have a series of uh, webinars and workshops that are free for uh, for attendees, uh, you can sign up and you'll have a um, an instructor from Microsoft and Red Hat leading the workshop, they're hands on. Uh, we also have like um, a developer guides uh, and tutorials that are periodically being produced and put out there. And like what also said, they will be announced on either the documentation or blogs, um, but, but look, keep an eye out from Microsoft and Red Hat for these joint type of education you know, uh, materials. And I think this is an interesting question for you. Will Microsoft become a Jakarta E member? That is a very good question. And uh, I'll, I'll answer it strategically. Uh, Microsoft is in the business of being customer obsessed. So our customers are leading us. And when the customer demand shows that it makes sense for us to engage with that, uh, we will um, certainly try to do it. Um, in the meantime, we are staying up to date on all of the developments. Uh, for example, uh, you may see elsewhere in build, we have uh, some announcements regarding running open slash WebSphere Liberty on Azure Red Hat OpenShift and also Azure Kubernetes service. And by doing that, we are enabling you to run uh, Jakarta EE on Azure just as a native, perfectly fine thing. So the capabilities are there. Uh, as far as getting back to the good old days of when I was a spec lead, um, I would love that. Um, but we'll see if it makes business sense to do it. Okay, so uh, there's a, actually a, questions that keep coming in. I think uh, I'll, I'll ask this one. It has a, a decent amount of votes and it's a Red Hat topic. So, um, Teresa, do you mind telling us how does uh, Azure support Quarkus users today? Uh, we are now, we're engaged with Red Hat and discussing this in the talking with customers on their roadmap and needs to bring Quarkus onto Azure. So uh, it's an early discussion phase, uh, but we are aware that there are uh, interests out there and looking at possibly bringing it in and now looking at to see where we can bring it in and how. Mm -hmm. Okay, So uh, here's an interesting question. I think uh, this might be a good one for Bruno. It's a little bit of a curveball, but it's, I think it's an interesting question nonetheless. Is WSL or native Windows more preferred for Java developers? Yeah, there's a that's a 
That's an interesting uh, question because there there isn't really um, it, it's really a preference of the developer. What we can say is that Microsoft does recommend that the the development of the job application happens on an IDE or editor that runs on Windows. <clears throat> if you do want to test your application, how your application will behave on a Linux environment or uh, integrate with other perhaps native components or maybe uh, uh, JNI or some other like native API calls, then you have Linux right there in the WSL terminal uh, for you to, to evaluate and test. So that's the power of WSL on Windows. You have Windows for developing your application. You can use any other Windows native application that is available to you. You can use for playing games if you want, but if you want to have access to a, a, an easy access and quick access to a Linux machine, WSL is right there. And uh, it's a Java application. Once you build on, on your IDE or using Maven on the on Windows environment, you can just easily run the jar file on the Linux environment through WSL. And uh, what, one thing that that we did announce recently is even support for Java desktop applications or actually any GUI application on WSL. So if you are developing Java desktop applications and we had the question about JavaFX, you can actually run the JavaFX application through WSL and see how that application would behave on a Linux environment, for example, to test file system access in other things and, uh, and, and see if the application is working fine both on Windows and on Linux. All of that without having to leave the Windows environment or going through a separate hardware, or separate laptop, or even starting a fully fleshed VM uh, on some sort of virtualization software. So that is a true power of the WSL for Java developers. You, you have both worlds uh, for right in front of you. Well, there's another aspect of Visual Studio Code that does really well with this. If you start Visual Studio Code on the Windows side, or on the WSL side, it will use the built-in remote uh, extension, the remote toolkit to make it just work. So I use uh, VS Code on the WSL side all the time and it's very smooth. So here's a question that has a decent amount of votes also. Uh, I think also it would be good for you to take this one, I think. So this is, why should Java developers consider Azure DevOps as opposed to Jenkins? Um, so when you're working on Azure, right, you can build end-to-end -end automation from idea to production using any automation tools and platform of your choice. If you're using Jenkins or GitLab today and like to continue your journey on Azure, more power to you, you can do that, right? You have all the building blocks for that. If you like to use Azure DevOps or GitHub, uh, Git, GitHub right? We have all the all the pieces for you as well, so that it is your choice, right? So typically, when customers come to Azure, we see them build multiple pipelines, and they are broadly categorized into three of them. Uh, they provision, so they provision using tools like Terraform, ARM templates, and CLI. All of them you can use in Jenkins or GitLab, any 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 all Azure pipelines or GitHub Actions, right? You can do that. They build them, they build a, build and store their jars, wars, all of them in the artifactory, and then they deploy. Uh, even when you deploy, uh, that's a separate uh, class of pipelines where they can use uh, use it in CLI and, and Jenkins, or they can use GitHub Actions, or they can use Azure pipelines, right? Now, the key thing here is it is your choice. Whatever you feel comfortable, we have that for you. All right, so I think we're doing pretty good in terms of the questions. Uh, there's a few others. I think uh, I, I did see one interesting one I think is is worth uh, answering. So I'll, I'll ask this uh, to Bruno. I, I'll ask this to uh, Martin, I think. What security tools does Microsoft offer for its Java build? If any, are they free or does it require a paid license? I couldn't find any information on the Microsoft site. Hmm, that's an interesting question. So security tools, that's quite a, a wide, uh, a broad, a broad uh, community of, of tools that can fit inside that space. When it comes to the security tooling that we actually test our own build of Microsoft Build of OpenJDK on, that, that's proprietary internal tooling to Microsoft and, and we, we don't discuss those. Um, 
for external tooling, um, you know, the folks just rely on the typical tooling that's out, out there with the open source community today. So at this stage, we don't have any specific plans to release uh, any security related tools for our open JDK. OK, I think this is the last question I think we're going to do for today. We're uh, almost at the uh, at, at the mark of our time here. So uh, I think, uh, Asir, why don't you ask the, uh, answer this one? What is the integration story? for targeting Azure services using Spring Boot applications? What is the integration stories, right? So when you have Spring Boot apps, you can run in many destinations on Azure. You can run it on virtual machines or Kubernetes. You can run it on app servers, Azure Spring Cloud. There are many choices you have. Now, when you run these apps, these apps are interacting with um, data services, cache, messaging, eventing, um, directory monitoring, you know, there are many, many of these integration points. So this is where I want to point out over the last five and a half years, we have been working with Pivotal and now it's VMware, the Spring Engineering team directly to make sure that you have the best experience to interact with Azure services for data. For example, if you talk about data, it is like whether you are connecting using JPA or JDBC or R2DBC, you can connect with all of Azure data services like SQL database, MySQL, Postgres, right? Now, if you're connecting to MongoDB or Cassandra, you can connect to, connect to Cosmos DB using the Spring Data Connectors. All of them are tested and it's working, uh, working for you. Now, if you're connecting to Service Bus or Event Hubs using JMS or Kafka, certainly you can use those JMS template in Spring Boot. Uh, the JMS, uh, also the Spring Cloud Stream binders for for Service Bus or the Event Hubs, you can use them to connect. So we have made sure all those choices are available for you on the messaging and the eventing front. Right now, for the cache, whether you are externalizing your session or using it for app cache or use high speed searches, we have the Spring Spring Data uh, Redis or the Spring Session Data Redis. All those connectors you can use, and they're all tested with Azure uh, Redis Cache uh, service. Right now, we have other class of customers who are very much focused on the end user authentication and authorization. So this is where we have worked with the Spring Security team to make sure that the, there is a starter and the auto configure are available so that you can enable enterprise grade authentication and author authorization using Azure Active Directory or Azure Active Directory B2C. So we have done the grunt of the work. All you have to do is just turn it on and configure and it will it'll just work for you. Then the other important piece, which is managing secrets and your certificates. So this is where we have starters for Key Vault, right? Which all you have to do is just magically add and configure. All those secrets will be completely stored and managed in Azure Key Vault, and you'll just get hydrated like magic for you. Similarly, for certificates with zero trust approach, so all the certificates are managed in uh, uh, Key Vault, and all you have to do is co configure, and it'll be loaded in memory, and it'll be used so that nobody else can see those certificates and secret. Similarly, for the integration with monitoring, Right. Um, for example, if you're deploying into Azure Spring Cloud, the integration there is it'll just effortlessly connect and give you all the data and the insights. You don't have to do anything at all. So we continuously innovate. If you have more features that we should be thinking about, send it to us and we'll work with the VMware team to make sure that it happens for you. And one other important point on that is that all of those are done in a very spring idiomatic fashion. Exactly. So all you need to do, if you're a spring developer and you know, know already how to do the spring way of doing these things, you just use the starter and then you've got Azure, the power of Azure right there at your fingertips. Exactly. All right, we are out of time and also out of question, which is good. It's just about a happy coincidence, I think. So. Um, Thank you everyone for tuning in and also thank you uh, to all of our moderators. I think uh, all of our panelists, I think it's, it was a uh, really good and uh, nice, nice uh, audience interaction and nice set of questions. Um, but do remember uh, we are always available. All, all of us are easy to access, pretty accessible folks that right? were out there. You know, you don't have to wait for an event like this to catch us and ask a question. Yeah, catch us our, on Twitter. Uh, our, our job is uh, to answer your questions whenever and wherever. So wherever you can find us, you know, you can ask us questions. It doesn't have to stop you. All right, with that, uh, thank you very much and have a good evening. Thanks a lot. Sure.
Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.